Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you've been having a good week. It's been very hot over here where I'm at, so hopefully you're not dealing with the same thing. I thought for today's video, it would be fun to try to paint a self-portrait. I've been painting a lot more lately, and I've been utilizing new tools, new techniques, basically an entirely new workflow than I'm used to, and it's been a long time since I've painted a self-portrait. In fact, I don't really do portraiture that much at all, and I really need to, it's definitely one of my bigger weaknesses. So I think with this exercise here, I'll be able to kind of gauge where I'm at and then maybe go deeper into studying portraiture itself or maybe just paint some more self-portraits. I don't know. It's not something that I do often, but definitely something I wish I did more of. I don't know why I don't just pull the trigger and do it. Eh, sometimes you just end up running from your weaknesses. It can be a bad habit. So if you've watched any of my recent videos, you can see that I'm kind of following the workflow that I've been utilizing. I'm not starting from a sketch, I'm going straight into painting. I'm utilizing very textured brushes. I'm starting off very big and expressive, kind of scribbly, because I want a lot of that noise and texture to remain throughout the piece as I kind of refine everything. As for my main goals with this piece, I want to mostly focus on two very specific things. One, I want to really focus on the brushwork. Good brushwork and brush economy are things that I talk about pretty often. And in this piece, I really want to try my best to be mindful of every stroke that I'm putting down. When you're painting digitally, it can be really easy to forget to change your brushes often or change your colors because there's no physical need to reload the paintbrush with a fresh color that you may need to mix again. And remixing a color, you might end up with a different hue or saturation or Maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not, but nonetheless, all those little nuances tend to add a lot of life to painting. And replicating that digitally provides its own unique challenge, especially when you're trying to get that traditional look. My second main focus is I'm going to try to paint this so it looks as if it was painted using the Zorn palette. Now most artists, especially painters, I'm sure know what the Zorn palette is, but really quick, it was made famous by an old Swedish artist, Anders Zorn and it consists of yellow ochre, ivory black, vermilion, and lead white. And that's it. It's a very limited palette, but you can achieve a huge range and variety with it. Now, of course, with this being digital, I'm not being super strict with this. I'm not making sure I'm using the proper color codes or anything like that. It's just something that I have in my mind. And while I'm color picking, I'm just visualizing as close as I can to the palette itself. With all that said, I think I started off pretty strong. All the shapes are there. It's looking fairly accurate. Now it's all just about being really mindful of the brushwork, like I was saying, to really emphasize the different forms and planes of the face, trying to really get that color and saturation to wrap around the face properly while it's all interacting with the light. I'm even experimenting with this really bright red nose that I normally don't do in portraiture, but just something that I wanted to play with here because generally speaking, a decent rule of thumb to follow is the lower part of the face should be cooler, the middle part of the face should be redder, and the top part of the face uh, more yellow. Plus a saturated red nose is a very easy focal point, and I'm trying to keep everything really loose except for the center of the face. So we'll see how it looks by the end. We'll see if I can tie it all together. Let's take a quick look at a couple artists that I'm kind of keeping in mind and I look to before starting this painting. Now it's really easy for me to just go off into the deep end and look at like hundreds and hundreds of old masters and modern artists for this, but as I often talk about, keep things small and have a tighter focus on things when you're learning new stuff. So for this we're just going to be looking at three artists. For this first one, you can't be talking about a self-portrait and referencing the old masters without bringing up Rembrandt. He was a very famous self-portrait artist. Everyone knows him. You'd be hard pressed to find someone who hasn't at least heard of Rembrandt, whether you're an artist or not. One thing I always loved about his work is just how dark everything is. His use of light against the dark, the contrast, it's just perfect. I love it. His work has very expressive brush strokes as well, and it's just always been something that I've aspired to. And then next, can't be talking about his palette without mentioning Anders Zorn. Here he is using his infamous palette. 
a lot of his work for me has this very beautifully soft kind of look to it. And for me, a lot of that comes from just his excellent use of lighting, but mostly his edge work, especially in the darks. I love all the lost edges, all the hard edges in the light. All of it just comes together so well in his work, and it's definitely something that I often go back to and admire. And finally, I should probably include a living artist, and we'll have to include my favorite, Craig Mullins. There's obviously a ton of excellent modern artists, but for me, when I'm thinking of digital art and master, the first person to come to my mind is Craig Mullins. I see him as the digital art master. And as far as portraits go, these two are my favorite of his. I just absolutely love the different plays on texture, the very minimal brushstrokes that still achieve so much, and just overall, the very high energy and expressive nature of these sketches. It's superb. So now that we have a small taste of some of my inspiration for this, uh, let's see if I can get anywhere near it. The short answer is no, I'm not going to get anywhere near any of those excellent works, but that's okay because I'm not necessarily trying to. I look to those artists and others just for inspiration. And if I can take even just a small piece of each of those artists' work and kind of inject it into my own, then that's a win for me. I'm not trying to be the next mini version of any of them or any other artist. I think that's a big mistake that some artists kind of fall into. Instead, it's more about analyzing their work and figuring out what it is I like about it. Whether that's just like the technical aspects like I've been talking about, the brushwork, the colors, the texture, or more emotional. Like, why does something make me feel this way? How do they actually convey that? Are they even intentionally conveying that? Or am I interpreting it? And does it really matter either way? How can I get that into my work? And these are just some of the questions that I ask when I look at work that moves me and inspires me. I'm not just trying to replicate it, but rather understand it. And honestly, that's really the hardest part of art, right? Having something to say. And you could change a lot of whatever that something is just by changing the way your brush strokes go down or how you handle your edge work or how dramatic the lighting is. It doesn't really matter what the subject matter is, like these were portraits, but they can still be saying so much more than this is some portrait that I painted today. Which I'd say is likely a big reason why self-portraiture among artists has been so prevalent throughout the ages. It's got this unique kind of introspective aspect to it. You can tackle it so many different ways, like metaphorical, literal, emotional, and plus it's a free model, right? That's always available, so why not? But all this kind of takes me to my hot take of the video, and I'm about to say this as somebody who has a ton of room to improve, don't get me wrong, but the technical aspects of art aren't necessarily that hard to learn. A lot of it is just a foundational rule set that you follow, that way you could convey your ideas, thoughts, feelings, emotions to the viewer. And these days, with how much information we have readily available at our fingertips or at a library, it's astounding. And it's not that hard to go out and start learning this stuff. I'm a firm believer that anyone can be an artist. It's just that not everyone has the commitment or even something interesting to say. The more you start to develop your skills, the more you realize that a lot of it kind of comes down to how confident and comfortable you are with yourself to express these ideas, thoughts, and emotions. And that there is not something that just anyone can do. All this rambling to say that this is just kind of where I'm finding myself after these last few years of kind of exploring myself as an artist, especially making these videos on YouTube and rambling on about them. It's just indicative of my current disposition, I guess. So let's see where we are. Everything's looking fairly accurate and in its place, so now you'll see that I'm using a very small brush and I'm just kind of going around the painting and getting all of those final details in. As I mentioned, I'm trying really hard to focus on where the focal point is and I want to leave everything around that pretty much untouched. I want it to have that initial really sketchy, messy laydown that I had in the beginning, basically the underpainting showing through. 
I'm also going to be adding in the darkest darks pretty soon here. I'm unfortunately painting this from an older photo. I should probably be just be doing this from a mirror or something. Probably do that for the next one, or at least take some proper photos. But the lighting in the photo is nothing too crazy, and I didn't really go out of my way to change the lighting. So it's a little too uniform and flat, a common problem when you take just standard photos. I would have liked to have gotten some of that Rembrandt lighting, but we'll take some photos and do that for the next one. I'm also noticing that overall it's a little too wide, so towards the end I'm going to just narrow it a bit, which I might have overdone, I don't know. Not that big of a deal though. I do think that the likeness is there. So I'm just going to close the painting out by cutting into a lot of the colors and shapes that I've already placed in, just to get a little bit more variety and show the different plane shifts on the face. And I'll finish by working on the background just a little bit, just so I pop out a little bit more. Because right now it's a little too dark and not enough contrast. Alright, I've finally gotten around to completing a recent self-portrait painting. And honestly, I think it came out pretty good. I think the likeness is there. I think that I achieved what I set out to do. It's of course not perfect, and it's not anywhere near any of those inspirational paintings that I shared. But when I look at the goals that I set out for myself ahead of time, I think I hit them all. I think I stuck as true to the palette as I could. I really like the brushwork. Uh, I could probably slow down even more, but nonetheless, I still like it. And yeah, I think this one is a successful stepping stone into getting better at portraiture in general. So I should probably start doing a ton more self-portraits. That'll be a good start. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you didn't mind the rambling. But that's just how it goes sometimes, right? And honestly, that's what you should be here for anyways, I suppose. That's really all I have to say on this one. So I'll see you next time.